This is the third and final section in the momentum and impulse chapter and it's momentum as a vector. Now actually there isn't much more um, to what you need to do uh, compared to the previous two sections. Um, the only thing you, that's going to be added now is the use of vectors and the vectors um, i and j. So you'll remember the unit vectors i and j. So now when we have our velocity, our velocity is going to be a vector in terms of i and j, which means that the impulse will be given as a, a vector in terms of i and j. So we're still using impulses force times time. So uh, here our force could be a vector. Here our velocities could be vectors, meaning that the impulse ends up as a vector. And again, here our velocities can be vectors and we use all the normal rules about uh, using the i and j vectors. And remember, if we want to find the magnitude of a vector, the size of a vector, then we just use Pythagoras. And we can use trigonometry to find the direction of a vector. So if we need to find a direction of a vector, then it's normally something like the tan inverse of one number over the other. So I'll just put tan inverse there, a bit of trigonometry. Okay, so a particle of mass 0.2. So mass is always going to be a scalar moving with velocity 10i minus 5j when it receives an impulse of 3i minus 2j, find a new velocity. So we still use the uh, impulse uh, formula here. The only thing is, is that we're going to have some vectors. So our impulse is 3i minus 2j. Now it may be easier to use the form of the formula where we have it factorized like this. Yeah, it's just a little bit easier to deal with. So our mass is 0 0.2 and um, we know the velocity um, before, we don't know the velocity afterwards. So I'm gonna underline it. So actually now I should underline these because these are all vectors. Uh, so we want to find the velocity afterwards. So the velocity before is going to be this 10i uh, minus 5j. And it's just a matter of working this out, really. So uh, 3i minus 2j equals, and then we're going to have 0.2v. So we're basically expanding the brackets now, I suppose. Uh, minus 0.2. To, well, actually, let's work out what that is rather than write it out. So 0 0.2 times by 10 is going to be, um, that's a fifth of 10, that's going to be 2. So 2i minus 1j or j. So I've just worked out what 0 0.2 of this vector is. Uh, and the rest is now sort of making V the subject. So I could say that 0.2V equals uh, 3i minus 2j plus 2i minus j. So 0.2V equals, well, if I add the i's together, I get 5i. If I put the j's together, I get minus 3j. So the vector basically divide both sides by 0.2, which is the same as times in by 5. So I get 25i uh, minus 15j. So at this point, we could now work out what the speed is by um, doing Pythagoras on this. And we can work out the direction by doing uh, a bit of trigonometry on that, but this is all they want is what the new velocity is. So working with these vectors, and I suppose I should put that in brackets and put that this is meters per second. And I 
Ice Hockey Puck of mass 0.17 receives an impulse of Q impulse, uh, Newton seconds immediately before the impulse we're given the velocity and immediately afterwards we're given its velocity find the magnitude of Q okay so this is going to be Pythagoras here and the angle well this is going to be some sort of tan inverse between Q and I so make sure that we do our diagram to make sure that we work out the correct angle right so impulse equals mass velocity afterwards minus velocity before uh, so we're working out the uh, impulse and the mass is 0 0.17 the velocity um, after um, the collision is 15i minus 7j and we're subtracting the impulse before which is 10i plus 5j that's going to be 0 0.17 let's work out what's in the bracket so 15 minus 10 5i negative 7 minus 5 that's minus 12j so let's times those by 0 0.17 to work out what the the impulse as a vector is so 0 0.17 times 5 gives me 17 over 20 which is 0 0.85 i 0.85i and 0.17 times by 12 gives us so we're going to have minus 0.204j minus 0. sorry minus 2.04 2.04j okay so there's i as a vector so the magnitude of i over here what we're going to do Pythagoras on this so 0 0.85 squared plus negative um, to do it again not zero 2.04 2.04 that's going to be squared so let's do that so square root 0 0.85 squared plus this uh, 2.04 squared 221 over 100 which is 2.21 okay so it's newton seconds so that's the magnitude now the direction draw a diagram always draw a diagram okay so my impulse is 0.84 across and 2.04 down so it's going like this doesn't need to be to scale so 0.85 and this one is going to be the negative 2.04 and we need to find the angle between that and the and i which is going to be this angle here so that will tell us which way round we do the tan inverse so since i'm finding this angle opposite over adjacent is going to be the 2.04 over 0.85 remember we just need the size of that length yeah so don't put minus 0.2.04 just 2.04 so opposite 2.04 over the adjacent 0 0.85 okay so I'll just put there theta equals that so the direct the direction and we are in degrees tan inverse 2.04 divided by 0 0.85 will give us 67.38 
0, 1 degrees, we normally give our angles to one decimal place, so that would be 67.4 degrees, so 67.4 degrees. Right, a squash ball of mass 0.025 kg is moving with a velocity. So we've got the velocity before, before when it hits a wall. We have the velocity uh, after it hits the wall. Find the impulse exerted by the wall on the squash ball. Now, I know these things are moving at angles, but I'm going to sort of draw a diagram just to help visualize what's going on. So there's my wall. OK. This makes it look like it's moving in a straight line, but it's not. I just want to represent it this way. So 22i plus 37j as it's moving towards the wall. And then when it rebounds, it's rebounding at this 10i minus 11j. So these are actually at an angle. Yeah, so this is not... Um, exactly how it looks and then 0.025 kg and then the impulse exerted by the wall on the squash ball which is actually this yeah so we've got everything we need there to uh, work out what that impulse is so in my working i'm going to take um well, we don't need to worry about which direction we're going to take as positive and negative because that's all taken care of with the with the vectors. It gives us the direction. So we don't need to decide, right, this direction is positive, this one's negative. It doesn't matter. So impulse MV minus MU. We're finding that impulse. I'm going to use the factorized form of this. So um, my mass here, 0.025. The velocity after, which is this 10i minus 11j minus the velocity before, 22i plus 37j. So that's 0.025 and then in the brackets we're going to have 10 minus now that looks like 221 that's an idea so uh, 10 minus 22 is negative 12 i and then negative 11 minus 37 i think that's minus 48 j Okay, and all we need to do is multiply those numbers by 0 0.025. So 0 0.025 times by negative 12 is negative 0 0.3. So negative 0 0.3i. And then 0 0.025 times by negative 48 is negative 1.2. So minus 1.2 to j and there we go okay if the question now asked for the uh, magnitude of the of the impulse you would do pythagoras on it and if it asked for the direction you would do trigonometry on it so that's a pretty straightforward one okay so i'll just highlight that so a particle of mass 0.1 5 kg is moving with this velocity 20i minus 10 uh, j uh, when it collides with uh, a particle of mass 0.25 moving with that velocity 69 minus 8 j the two particles coalesce now when you read that what it means is they combine um, and after collision we can just use the total mass after collision and what we want, uh, and uh, what we want to do is find the velocity of the combined particle. So we're going to use the conservation of linear momentum. So before the collision, we're going to have 0.15 times by 20i 
minus 10j plus the 0.25 times by 16i minus 8j and that is going to equal the total momentum afterwards which is just going to be the combined mass times by the velocity v yeah so we'll underline it right let's work out what we get on the left so i'm going to work out the i's and atoms together so if i do 0 0.15 times by 20 i that's going to give me 3i then 0 0.15 times a negative 10 is going to give me minus 1.5j then I'm going to get uh, 0 0.25 times by 16 uh, which is going to be 4i And then 0 0.25 times by 8 is going to be minus 2j equals this 0.4v. Right, so 7i and then minus 1.5 minus 2 gives me minus 3.5j equals this 0.4v. So if I divide both sides by uh, 0.4 I will get V so V is going to equal basically um, I can write it like this and then 7i minus 3.5 J so let's work out what that is so 7 divided by 0.4 is going to give me 17.5 I 17.5i and then uh, 3.5 or negative 3.5 divided by 0 0.4 is going to give me 8.75j so minus 8.75j so there we go that's the velocity of the combined whoops that's meant to be a highlighter of the combined particles now strictly speaking what I should do is put that in brackets and then put meters per second because we're dealing with a velocity right you should now be able to do exercise 1c on pages 11 and 12 and remember this is very similar to what you were doing in the previous two sections in the AS work this is a2 work uh, the only difference is um, you're using the vectors i and j.